Hello and welcome back to Dominions 4. I am your host, Mega Caesar, and this is the fourth episode of Mate Uratactitlan Saga. Now, as a Dwarf Comic, yeah, I almost want to call you Dwarf Comic Land, but technically that's not your name. Although, well, this is you, of course. Um, as, as you commented, the music is a little bit loud, so I turned it down as low as I could go. I can barely hear it now, but that's perfectly all right. All I can hear is like the, uh, I think a tambourine it's called. But okay, last turn we conquered Florine, our first new province. Of course, all provinces are actually ours, they just don't know it yet. We defeated the independence and we conquered a slave market. So I'm going to show, show you these sites right away. They are magic sites, just like these, by the way. And uh, as my little brother correctly pointed out yesterday, I forgot to tell you about these. So... Let's get started with the slave market. The slave market produces three blood slaves per turn, which is great. I already told you that they are the bread and butter of our economy, just like the Jaguar warriors are the bread and butter of our armies. We've also got the Canyon of Sand, which produces one earth gem per turn. Well, great. This is our first earth uh, magic site. Um, in Miklan, we've got the Temple of the Land, the Temple of the Rain, Temple of the Moon and the Temple of the Sun. Now, please give me one moment. Um, yeah, okay. Sorry, I had to check something important, which is whether I actually uh, I was actually recording because I thought for a moment that it wasn't. So I'll start with the Temple of the Land. It enables recruitment of the Priest King, which is this guy, and of the Eagle Warrior, which is the uh, other uh, the second type of sacred unit. It also produces one nature gem per turn. As you can see, we get one per month at the bottom of the screen. We've got the Temple of the Rain, one water gem per turn, and the Rain Priest, which is, by the way, the guy we're going to return, uh, recruit this time. The Temple of the Moon, which enables recruitment of the Moon Priest and produces one Astral Pearl. These are called pearls, by the way, per turn. Now, these are important, even if we won't use them that much. Um, they're used to alchemize into other gems. So for instance, if we select a mage, he's a mage, he got a magic skill here, we can use alchemy, and then we can uh, turn astral pearls into other types of gems. The exchange rate is 2 to 1. Two astral pearls turn into one fire gem, for instance. It also works the other way around. Two fire gems turn into one astral pearl. That way, for instance, if we need nature gems, we can alchemize fire gems to astral pearls, and then alchemize our astral pearls to nature gems. So this is the Temple of the Moon with the astral pearls. And we've got the High Temple of the Sun, which produces three blood slaves per turn. Again, wow, great. So we basically doubled our natural slave income. And it also produces two fire gems per turn. It enables recruitment of the Sun Warrior and the High Priest of the Sun. There we go, this is our High Priest of the Sun. Can we afford one? No, we need... Four more gold. So we're going with the Rain Priest. Now, Chico Mac Sochtli, the Miklan Priest, will... Um, he will start Blood Sacrificing. There we go. Perform Blood Sacrifice. Now, in order to do that, we need to give him some Blood Slaves. Okay. We right-click him. Then we go here to his Personal Magic Gems. Yes, Blood Slaves count as gems. But they actually participate in the battle. Not that they're great units, but they'll stay near their commander and sometimes they'll soak up hits for him. So, yeah, we give him one blood slave. Go, and we will. I press space, by the way. You can also click here. Perform blood sacrifice. There we go. He will sacrifice one slave each turn. The amount he can sacrifice is equal to his priest level. And if he's on a province with a laboratory, which is. Um, which is basically, it basically gives us access to all our magical, magical resources, our magic items. And it's also where our magicians can perform all these commands. Except for search for magic sites and blood hunt. Which can be done anywhere. So, okay, he's going to sacrifice blood slaves. And the laboratory will replenish them. As you can see, we're now at 14. But plus 6 per month. So, a net plus 5 per month. Cho Chi... Okay, I'll come call. I think I already said that. So, yeah. He's going to search for magic sites. What this does is, well, it searches the province 
for sites like these which aren't revealed instantly. For instance, some sites are basically, um, I think this one is Earth level zero. The only thing you need to do to discover it is enter the province. The slave market, same thing. But some sites are, for instance, nature level two or Earth level two or anything else. And they need, yeah, they need a skilled site searcher. The most uh, difficult sites to find are level four sites, and there are no level five sites that I'm aware of. So, yeah, Dwarf Comiclan did a great job oh, commanding our armies. He lost ten warriors, but that's great because we want to lose those. After all, they cost us, I right clicked them for the details, they cost us seven gold per year. And we can spend that gold on Juggle Warriors. Basically, as they cost 24 gold per... Uh, to, they 26 gold to recruit. Well, tw uh, 14 gold is two of these. So, 21 gold for three of these. 28 gold for four of these guys. Four of these guys cost us one Juggle Warrior per year. And that may not seem like a lot, but everything matters here. Um, plus... They can catch some arrows. So we're recruiting Juggle Warriors here. That's alright. We're sacrificing someone. We're capturing slaves. Now we're going to change his order. As you can see, we already recruited some Juggle Warriors. And we're giving him to Xolotl, the Tribal King. And we're moving these guys up. And he's going to attack the same province. Not so much because we need the troops. I mean, they got 20 light infantry and militia. But because he can bring the reinforcements there. So I'm going to select the province, press Y, which shows us all the units moving to the forest of Gila. And then we can arrange them. This is really useful by the way, you shouldn't forget that. Just press Y, you can see all the troops moving to the province. And by the way, not the troops leaving the province. So everyone who will be there is now shown. So. We're giving them the orders to attack the rearmost enemy. He will stay behind the troops. Let's, uh, let's put him all the way in the back. Just here. Actually, I'm going to put him on retreat. Which is interesting. Because there will still be a commander on the field. These guys won't round. If all commanders die, they do. They do. But, well, he's the only one. So he's going to retreat. And then stay back. And hopefully, as there's a 50% chance, he will retreat from the province. To Meatland, which will save us one turn of moving him. Otherwise, he'll end up in this province and uh, yeah, spend the next turn moving back. Of course, he can also end up in Florine, but it's a nice bonus. It might save us one turn. We're recruiting the Rain Priest, and I'll press N. Oh, there we go. We forgot Paynal the Scout. Now, Paynal the Scout, you're going to Hexwoods. Let's check out his throne. And. Uh, Press N. Well, that's basically it, people. We've covered it all. Okay, so we're going to end our turn. AI thinking, appointing prophets, resolving battles. Okay. Cal has searched Florine for magic sites, but none was found. Well, he was searching a farmland, and farmlands are generally low in magic sites. They may contain some, but they usually don't. But that's all right. We can search the next province. There was a battle in the forest of Gila. Let's view the battle, shall we? Um, I'll pause it here. And let's see. What do they have? They've got some commanders. A archer here. Militia here. And... Um, okay. We've got our warriors. Our two sets of juggle warriors. Let's see how this turns out. Let's see how this goes. So there's shots fire. Define blessing. There we go. They've been blessed. Regeneration. All right. What's this? Oh, it's a little bush. Okay, our warriors are uh, fighting them. Here we go. A small group of juggle warriors engaging the enemy. Regenerating. They're beating them up. Okay. Our great prophet is smiting the enemy of uh, Mateo Rattaktitlan. 
and the independent armies have been routed. Okay, well, victory. Let's see, what did we lose? Nothing. What did we kill? Three commanders, three archers, ten light infantries and eight militia. You know, we got more units than they do, but with less commanders. I don't know why they need all these commanders. Okay, there we go. I uh, forgot to explain something important, which is province defense. Province defense regenerates each turn. Basically, if you up it, I'm doing it with the arrow keys right now. You get units which help with the defense of this province. It's basically what it says. Also gives unrest reduction per 10. It gives one, see? And it adds patrol strength, which can intercept sneaky units. At least it does that up from the point of, uh, yeah. It starts doing that at 15 province defense. Now every level, Costs the amount of gold. Uh, sorry, cost uh, every new level costs the new level in gold. So, for instance, go from one to two costs one gold. Now it costs two gold. Now it costs three gold, four gold, etc. I'm adding in at least one. Why? You might think, well, one militia unit and one light infantry, and here one heavy infantry and the tribal king, of course, which we get here too. Want to defend the province, and well, you're right. Except for if we're attacked by scouts. I mean, one scout will probably still get beat up at these three guys. And, um, yeah. But it does still help us. Why? Well, imagine that we're being invaded uh, here by o Oceania, who have taken over the Shadow Sea, by the way. Well, they'll attack Florin, and we get a battle report. So we can see exactly how big their army is. Well, this is an estimation. It says 50 enemy units. So, okay. That's why I picked one province defense. We know what's, what we're up against. Now let's move uh, Chao here to the forest of Kila. And Dwarf come. Oh, you have become a hero. You've got a heroic ability. So you're now in the Hall of Fame. Oh, sorry, Hall of Fame. And you're... Here, Dwarf Kami Clan, with 3 kills and 12 experience. Bernard the Brave is at the top. He's a mercenary, I think. And some guy named Ephithion is even higher up. But that's alright. We'll probably catch up, because these guys are going to die. And so are you, but we're going to revive you. So, oh yeah, so let's check out your ability. You've got Tough Skin. A hero with this ability receives increased protection. So it's normally zero. And there we go, you got plus three. All right. Well, that's pretty pretty okay. I guess uh, in the church of Mate Uratakitlan, you have to be tough. You know, we value strength. We value the fact that you can take a lot of damage. And uh, by the way, I told you that our tribal king routed right away or retreated. And he didn't go here, so he's back in the capital. This saves us one turn. He can start capturing slaves right away. Again, like we did before, we want a lot of these guys. So every free turn, we recruit more of them. Now our next recruitment will be a Moon Priest. We've already got the Rain Priest. And this guy, who uh, performed Sacrifice, and I think he, he must have spread a Dominion somewhere. We got one Dominion here. Zero, zero. I'll press Tab. We'll show it more quickly. One, one. Okay, didn't. What probably happened is um, our temple level is, uh, our, our dominion strength is seven, and he he acts like a temple, so he tries to spread our dominion, and it probably went here, and then fill because it failed to increase the uh, dominion level here, which the, the chance that that happens is pretty low, but okay, and then it tries to select a neighboring province, then it selected this one again, the chance is pretty low, and it failed to increase it here too. If it would have gone to a neutral province with zero dominion, it would instantly have increased it. So then it went to one of these provinces, probably, and it lost the check against the enemy dominion. So yeah, but that's alright, he can go research now, and we're taking his blood slave away, and giving it to this guy, along with another one. And the rain priest is priest level 2, so he can 
perform two blood sacrifices per turn, spreading our dominion as strongly as two temples of a normal nation, like Oceania. So as you can see, if this guy would, if for instance, constantly sacrifice slaves, our dominion will spread more quickly than theirs. We'll basically beat them at that game. So, um, okay, he's capturing slaves, he's doing some research. Ah, Dwarf Kamiklan is defending. Well, that's unacceptable. We need Imiktan. There we go. We've set up our new units. They're now still, they're now in one squad here. Attacking closest. And you're attacking rear. Oh, wait a moment. You're attacking the closest. And you are attacking the rearmost enemies. Because these guys can really quickly take out the commander if they reach them. Which will route the enemy army instantly. Did we forget anyone? Yes, Penal. You go to Dragon Point. Dragon Point Hey, yes, my uh, little brothers and I like calling it. And okay. Now let's see, which route will we take? We could go here, and then here, and then here. I think that all that we're cons yeah we're going to construct a fortress here. So I'm pressing R here. What can we recruit here? A commander and here a mounted commander. So this guy is a little more expensive, but he got three map move, which is nice. So he'll he'll do the uh, yeah he'll do some construction jobs for us. Okay, that's everything. And turn. Okay. Let's see. Enatum, the Enkidu commander, has claimed the throne of flames in the name of Kaspar. Okay, a proclamation from Agartha. They've got their prophet, a oracle of subterranean waters, which is a nice mage. This means that they got a divine level 4 prophet. And there was a battle in Imik. Oh, oh, wait, wait. Let's watch it. Feel this battle. Well, okay, we've, I saw that we won this, but... Uh, Let's watch it anyway. Okay, first pause. What do they have? They've got bear tribe warriors, which are undisciplined units, which means that they um, can only be put in a certain formation and not given special orders. And that for uh, formation is skirmish formation, which puts them apart. As you can see, there are empty squares here between them. And it gives minus one morale. But that's all right for them, I guess, maybe. Oh, and bear tribe warriors here too. They've got javelins. And their leader is a bear tribe shaman. Now, as you can see, these guys are going to try to attack the back. There we go. Warriors are fighting here. I'm not sure where they they think they're going. Ah, look at these javelins dealing damage. Oh, they're just attacking them from here. Okay. Why not go for the commander and instantly route the enemy? Oh, they're already running. What is their morale? 9, and their basic is 10. Okay. Yeah, beat them up. Beat them up real good. Show them what you're made of, warriors. We got, there we go. Independent armies have been routed. And are really tough. Prophet keeps smiting them. It's not enough for him. Oh no, now he's just recasting the same spell, which is useless in this uh, situation, but okay. As we can see, by the way, he's surrounded by his bodyguards. Okay, quit battle replay. And, um, yeah, alright. Let's go to this province. No random events this turn. Okay, Imikton is ours, and we can recruit bear tribe shamans, which got nature magic, and we already have that. And they can get earth magic, which is okay, but, well, we'll see. Our turkey went here. And, uh, okay, you can see some ichids here. No, well, that was the end of this turn. We're going to continue next time on our conquest to conquer the world in the name of Mate Uratakitlan, God of Miklan, he who is... Wait a moment, what were her ti his titles again? <coughs> the dead and undying god and the shadow over all. There we go. And the most high, of course. Okay, oh, I don't want to end the turn. Well, have a good one. Leave your comments if you want to. And uh, I hope that the music volume was better this time. 
unless I turn it off by accident. Oh, it, oh, it uh, went to the end and stopped there. So okay, we're playing without music. Part of this video. Well, I can live with that. Goodbye. Take care.